Tips from the ER, scrubs. Since the COVID pandemic, some hospitals decided it probably wasn't a good idea for healthcare workers to be around COVID patients all day and then leave the hospital with COVID infested uniforms. So what did they do? They began using uniform dispensers. It's these big machines that spit out clean scrubs like a vending machine. You get to the hospital with your clean clothes, you grab a clean pair of scrubs, get your ass to work, and when you're done, you put your nasty scrubs back in the machine and you leave the hospital COVID free. You get to go home to your family or your cat knowing that you did everything you could to keep them safe from your disgusting job. Because remember, on top of COVID, you're also getting blood, pee, poo, spit, vomit, bugs, and pus on your uniforms daily. It's kind of gross, but hey, who's complaining? It's part of the job. And I'm a sucker for compliments. You keep calling me a hero, and I'll keep letting you spit on me. Tips from the ER. Code Silver. Away! Code Silver means someone in the hospital has a weapon, and they're on the loose. So hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband, because there's no telling what's going to happen. This dangerous person could have a gun, a samurai sword, or a rubber duck. You never know. The wrong items in the right hands could be fatal. But it's probably a gun. Regardless, you need to be on high alert. So drop your shit and get to safety, motherfuckers! Not your literal shit, of course. Scared as you might be, you don't want to leave a trail for the shooter to come find you. Get to a hiding spot, lock the doors, and for the love of God, silence your phones. For another video on Code Silver, check out Dr. Kern Rajan's hilarious version. Tips from the ER, HIPAA, or the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, but nobody calls it that. Ask any healthcare worker, they'd be lucky to get three out of five of those words. HIPAA is the reason we can't tell anybody about your naughty healthcare business without your knowledge or consent. If you accidentally get a condom stuck in you cheating on your wife or husband, don't you worry, your secret's safe with us. We're not going to tell them anything without your permission because of HIPAA. We will talk about it in the break room though, but we won't post it on social media. If your loved one was in an accident and you called the ER to check up on them, we're not going to tell you a damn thing over the phone because we have no fucking clue if you are who you say you are. We might tell you whether or not they're dying, but besides that, our lips are sealed. Don't be mad at us. Be mad at HIPAA. It's a reason so many healthcare workers get fired. You really want to know the craziest thing I've ever seen in the ER? I can't tell you, motherfuckers, because of HIPAA. You're just going to have to wait till I get fired, which at this rate seems pretty soon. Tips from the ER. Calling for advice. Are you calling the ER for medical advice because you're scared and don't know what to do? Did WebMD tell you that you're dying and you're calling us to confirm so you can set up your funeral arrangements? Well, I'm here to respectfully let you know that we're not going to tell you Jack Diddley squat over the phone. There's no way we're giving out medical advice without a proper medical assessment. And that means laying our pretty eyes and delicate hands on you. As much as we love listening to you explain your symptoms over the phone, there's no way we can give you an accurate evaluation from just your voice. You're going to have to come see us if you want our help. We're super needy like that. Besides, we don't want to get sued by your baby mama if you die at home from medical advice given over the phone. We'd rather have you die here, so we don't get sued. It's a quick visit, one to two to six hours. You never know. It's like ER roulette. How fun. Tips from the ER. Face down, ass up. Or medically known as proning. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of you have been coming in with very low oxygen saturation. That's the amount of oxygen circulating in your blood. The virus affects your body in a way that makes it hard for your lungs to do their job. Luckily, there's a simple trick that might just save your motherfucking life. It's called proning. Most of your lung is located towards your back. We lay you on your stomach to give your lungs more space to breathe, and it moves around all that disgusting mucus your body built up from trying to fight this infection. We lay you face down with your head turned to the side, of course. We're professionals. We're not going to let you suffocate. It's super creepy to see a bunch of patients lying on their stomachs with tubes down their throats to help them breathe, but until we're able to contain this virus, you're going to be face down, ass up, to get your sats up. Tips from the ER against medical advice. Are you unhappy with your ER experience? Did the doctor take too long to come see you? Did the nurse not flirt back? You poor thing, how dare they? Or maybe you had a change of heart and decided you're not that sick after all, and you'd rather be at home watching The Bachelor. Luckily for you, you can leave the ER whenever the fuck you want. It's called leaving against medical advice, and that is your right to exercise whenever the fuck you want. It's not like we're trying to hold you hostage in the ER. Some of you feel like as soon as you check in, you become our prisoner. That's just not true at all, because you could definitely leave whenever the fuck you want. Contrary to popular belief, we do not want your business. 
You are not the reason we have a job, Toe Pain. Emergencies will inevitably happen whether or not you come in for a sore throat. The ER is rarely ever short on patients. If you have the energy to walk up to the nurse's station to complain, remember Stevio's words. You can leave whenever the fuck you want. Tips from the ER. It's raining. You want to know how I know if you have a real emergency? If you manage to get your ass to the ER when it's raining. Because if there's one thing I've learned from working here, it's that you motherfuckers hate getting wet. Happens all the time when it rains. Half those emergencies that normally come to the ER suddenly don't need to come to the ER anymore. Especially when the weather sucks. You will come if the pain is bad enough though. I figured out the formula. Pain equals ER visit times weather squared. Don't get me wrong, we still get a bunch of ambulances, so we're not totally kicking back. But if you need to come to the ER and you're wondering if we're busy, check if it's raining. Chances are the waiting room is empty and we're going to get you in and out in no time. Ooh, in and out. Yum. Tips from the ER. Choking baby. I know some of you can't stand the sound of a crying baby, but I personally love that noise. It tells me at the very least that baby is alive. If your baby is moving around and its eyes are open, but it can't cough, breathe, or make any sounds, that's a sign that your baby might be choking. In which case, you're going to want to drop whatever the fuck you're doing, tell Siri to call 911 while you get that no noise making baby face down on your forearm. Support its head with your hand, tilt that sucker down, and smack that baby between the shoulder blades five times with the heel of your other hand. Then turn it over, don't drop it. Use two fingers to rapidly thrust into the center of the chest another five times. Rotate these until whatever's choking your baby falls out. Don't be afraid to be a little rough with the thrusting. Your baby could take it. Don't believe me? Just remember this. If there's one thing worse than a bruised baby, it's a dead baby. Tips from the ER. Shocking. Did you know that when we shock a patient, it's not because their heart has completely stopped working? As a matter of fact, you would never shock a heart that's flatlined. Those silly medical TV shows always trying to shock a dead heart back to life. Cut that out, Meredith. Get back to CPR. A shock to the heart is used when the heart is beating irregularly, aka when it's in fibrillation. We gotta defibrillate it. Guess what AED stands for? Automated external defibrillator. What? We gotta shock it back to normal. A heart in fibrillation is like a kid who won't stop jumping around. Sometimes it needs a little external stimuli to keep it in check. I'm just kidding. Please don't shock your kids. I've seen patients wide awake get shocked because their heart wouldn't stop acting funny. Painful to watch, but it saved their life. Shocking. Tips from the ER. Super Bowl Sunday. The unofficial holiday of America. Another excuse to get drunk, eat barbecue, scream, bet money, lose money, scream some more, all while wearing oversized football jerseys. We were all able to comfortably watch the game because nobody comes to the ER during the Super Bowl. You're all too preoccupied with the game to notice your pain and you're not yet drunk enough to do stupid shit. Even if you absolutely needed to come to the ER, you can't miss Tom Brady getting his seventh ring. You'll go after. And after you did. Because by the end of the third quarter, when that game was clearly over, you decided to pick your ass up to come see us. And the ERs got slammed. Happens like clockwork every year. We have a beautiful morning, then four hours of relaxing game time, followed by a big shitstorm of ER patients all coming in as if we were giving out free beer and hot dogs. I've never hated my life more than the six hours after a Super Bowl, and I lost every single bet I made. Damn you, Tom Brady. You motherfucker.